Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, I have been doing some Freyesto testing in campaign pushing with the single copy of him. Uh, I found what I think is probably the best team you'll be able to place him in as a free-to-play player with, uh, you know, just a single copy of him. It's honestly not too bad. It's comparable to the stages that I'm able to beat uh, using the rest of my heroes as well. I'm sitting in around just under a 2x deficit on my AFK stage push at the moment, uh, just running the OD team essentially and he actually slots in quite nicely to this team. There's a couple things that are, I'm going to show you guys about the way he works, uh, and I want to show you the general function of him. Now, should you pull a single copy of him? I still am not thinking it's worth it. I tried him in Arena. I couldn't really get him to work for me in Arena. I mean, my Arena offense team is just so solid with the swapping uh, and using Odie to snipe back row that I, I just don't really see a place for it in Arena. Uh, I definitely think a maxed out one has a place, but that is a completely different topic. We're talking about one copy here. I still think he's a safe skip. He actually helped me get higher damage in my Croker boss fight, which you guys can see in the previous video. Uh, and he's working pretty decently at one copy in campaign, but I don't think he's working enough for me to say, yeah, you should pull a copy is essentially where I'm at. But if you do want to get him and play with him, I do think he does have the viability at one copy. Um, but once again, Again, that is for free-to-play players who don't, aren't pushing high deficits with the high deficit teams like the Scarleta teams and stuff like that. So just keep all that stuff in mind. But let's take a look at the team that I am using him in. Now, this is the main team that I've been using, and I really like this team because it has some great synergies with him. First of all, him and you put him and his clone on the same row. That basically enables them to get the 30% damage mitigation. I then have the main body of him linked to Thorin to get Thorin's protection. Now, I will talk about like early game. I think this guy could be actually really, really strong uh, if he's like the first hypergene you pick up a copy of because he functions a little bit like uh, Antandra. Now, if you're playing early game, you won't have Thorin at Mythic Plus, so you won't have that link, but the rest of these principles still apply and you'd probably be using a Cecilia instead of a O and I can explain that team in a minute, but that's a bit different. In this team, what we're looking at is using the Mythic Plus uh, Thorin to link to him, so he gets a bunch of damage mitigation and he can survive. Then the cheesiness of him and what we're really using him for is to express the Coco ult in this team, because often in these teams, the, the issue is getting Coco to use her ult soon enough so that you can survive long enough. And what he does here, because when you have the, the unit position behind, behind his real body gets uh, the extra energy regeneration which I believe is 15% and at the start of the battle they get an extra 80 energy now it doesn't tell you the number when they gain that energy but that energy isn't there at the start of the battle it happens like one or two seconds in so I'm not sure if that 80 energy is actually affected by the extra 15% which would make it more like 92 energy but anyway what this does is it allows your Coco to ult a lot, a lot faster and so what we do is we put Thorin up by the time Thorin dies in most situations uh, Coco is going to get her ult off so that everyone else can survive. Now, obviously not every time that's going to happen, but that is the principle that we operate on here. Then we put Odie behind his other body double uh, just to get the damage mitigation. It's not optimal. It would have been better in this team if it was like two offensive buffs, but you know, Odie gets the damage mitigation. It is what it is, and that's what we're throwing it in for. And then we have our um, Smokey in the middle here. Uh, in this team, I have Smokey back a position because we've got our uh, old mate, Atala, Al 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 to the, the crossbow chick um we've got her there and if i put smoky up here whoops if i put smoky dude dude if i could position things if smoky's up here he might get shot so that's why we've got him back here and that's the basic process i really do like this team it has been working for me pretty well uh, as you can see we're 50k power they're 95k power so knocking on the door of that 2x deficit which uh you know you guys tell me if that's uh, if you guys think that's a reasonable deficit uh, i've been you know like putting in time into these stages to get to this deficit. So it's not just like the face roll auto battle deficit, but obviously others could push further depending on what teams you have and investment you have as well. But let's get into it and I'll show you the way this team functions. So I'll put it on one time speed. 
Uh, boom. And you can see Coco got that energy just a little bit after the start of the battle. So it doesn't happen completely instantly. And you can see, obviously, we've got his himself still there. His body double is already gone. So the body double's gone. Then we get that Coco ult, which is fantastic. And so it's that early Coco ult that we were aiming for. Obviously, he is now gone, but it's getting it fast enough because normally what I used to do is run Brutus in the team. And so the idea was that I would get uh, Thorin at the front. Thorin would die then Brutus would take over until Thorin was back and by the time Thorin got back then we would have the Coco ult and that was the kind of synergy that I used and he basically offers me a different synergy for that so obviously this run we lost but we'll do it a couple times for RNG we'll put it back up to two times speed uh, and see if we can get it to win so the idea is that that extra energy on Coco allows her to get that ult up before Thorin dies, ideally. Whereas normally in like the other teams I use, which is use, utilizing Brutus or an Antandra, uh, it's kind of like Thorin dies, then you hope Coco gets it before that next character dies so that when Thorin comes back, he has it. But sometimes you actually get it off even faster because we have that extra energy. So let's go ahead. Let's do another battle of this one. Let's put on two times speed, see what we can do. Uh, so his clone's in there. His clone just died, so he is still alive. Thorin's just died. We're going to get the Coco ult here, uh, and we got the heal as well. So there we go. He is still living. So as you can see, that was the purpose that we were looking for, is that the Coco ult comes soon enough to protect our team so that we can keep snowballing. Uh, so there we go. We get another Coco ult on Snowball. Once again, he is dead now, but it's that initial purpose that I am using him for because in these OD stall teams, this is essentially what you're going for. You're going to stall, heal, and try and get that Coco ult off so that you can top everyone off while the enemy's in their little burst phase. So that is what we're looking at. So let's go into the next one. Uh, dude, I don't even know what these guys do. Quick shot scout. Dude, I have no idea. Let's just leave this team and see how it goes. Uh, I'm tipping Thorin's going to get engaged pretty quickly, uh, which means Smokey should be able to heal him from this position. Let's just take a look. Oh, not those guys. Not those guys. Dude, I hate these guys. They run... Dude, the movement characters in this season are so annoying because my my Odie... Look at, look at him. My Odie has not hit them yet with an ult. My Odie misses every one of his ults because of those things moving so fast. It's such like a bad pathing issue uh, for the Odie. I, I don't know what, what causes it, but it is so frustrating because my Odie misses everything. Dude, we almost actually got it. So in, in this situation, I'm going to just straight up drop my Odie because the dude literally can't do shit. He, he, he just, he's useless because he just misses them every time. So let's try something like this. See how we go. See if we can get anything off. Oh, we lost, we lost our two healers. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Dude, I, I, I absolutely hate the, the movement characters in this season are just absolutely toxic. Uh, is there anything else I can do? Uh, you know what we might be able to do? Because that other team stalled out pretty well with Odie. Maybe we can just put an... Iron in and just group them up and then leave Iron to run up late. Let's see. Does that. No, Fresto dies instantly in that team. Rip. Unless we get a big revenge here from Thorin. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Maybe we just go back to the Odie team. It seemed to have the best RNG, even though he could not hit land a shot. Right, watch this. This is just disgusting. I hate this stuff. I hate this stuff. I I need to put some control in this team. Because watch Odie, watch Odie ult. Actually, wait, wait. I'll just manual the ult the back row. What am I doing? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Manual ult back row. You idiot, Vulcan. Manual ult back row. Uh, let's go you. Boom. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Oh, dude. I just double tapped. Oh, wait, wait. He was running directly away from us. So the pathing line worked. The pathing line worked. <laughs> clutch. That was clutch. All right, let's go, let's go. Boom. Uh, yes, dead. Okay. Dude, that was frustrating. That is just an annoying stage. There's no other way to put that, but just frustrating and annoying. All right, let's go again. Oh, not the riders again. And we got the uh, crossbow chick. Oh, these guys tap super hard. Dude, I, I'm hating these enemies. Uh, let's just let's just leave the team. Let's just see. Uh, Thorin's going to get knocked back. Hopefully, we can leave Smokey in this position. Smokey can keep on healing. Let's see how we go. Uh, this might be a team, an enemy where I, yeah, dude, dude, they, they just knew how to like shake up what you were doing 
from the previous season. So now we are at the genuine 2x deficit. These guys are super frustrating. I think we, if, if I have a chance at doing this, I'm going to have to drop Freyesto. I'm probably going to have to bring Iron and, and Arden to stop these guys. Uh, but I don't think we have enough in our team to get it. I think I might just be bricked at this stage for now. Um, I'm not seeing anything that I can do to actually get past this. Uh, what I'm going to try is, I'm going to try this randomly where I just bring Iron and I forego the Smoky. Uh, I might even try bringing the Rowan uh, and putting the Rowan on this side to boost the Coco. Uh, let's try that out of curiosity. Because this might get a Coco ult super early. Nope. No, yeah, dude, 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 I fucking hate these things. Holy shit, that's annoying. Uh, let's have another crack. Let's bring the Euron just to drag him back in. I don't think it's going to work. Let's just put him back a bit so he's got a bit of the delay getting there. Yeah, dude, these things, they just one-tap me, dude. This is where I need to pull another copy of Carolina because Carolina, then we just get the grouping, we get the Arden Roos, we get the Carolina, and we nuke this shit. But I just can't do it yet. I need one more copy. Also, I need Arden dupes as well. That's my problem. And I need Damien dupes. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're kind of bricked on the account at the moment in terms of the year on team. Uh, what else can we try? We could try Arden, just like literally just Arden um, to put the Roos on. Let's see if that does anything for us. Okay, so there we go. We got the, we actually got the roots on them, but we don't have the sustain now. Maybe we drop the cocoa. Maybe we drop the cocoa and bring back the um So maybe we do this. Let's try this. Can we get the heal? Good. We're charging. Arden's down. Dude, I feel like we ended up doing zero damage. I feel like we did zero damage in that. What the... What, what even went on there? Oh, dude. Dude, dude, dude. All right. Is there... Do we need to snipe the back row first? I feel like not, but let's just... Let's just manual. Our Odie. Uh, let's get her down first so that she doesn't get more CC in. Okay, Arden's already down. Uh, everyone's down. Dude, we are doing absolutely zero DPS. Uh, guys, I'd hate to say it, but that's where we are going to be bricked. Uh, I don't... If you guys see a team, let me know, but I don't see... Oh, wait. Everyone's level 220. Arden's 221. Uh, dude, I don't have my level set. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait this might help. Uh, you... I mean, I think we put it on the Smokey for heals. Dude, this thing, this, set, this setting's bugged at the moment, too. You click it and then you can't recognize it, and then you got to go out and come back in to see if it worked. Um, maybe. What if we did this? What if we did this out of curiosity? Because then we get the CC from Cecilia. But we might not have the execution damage that we need. Freyesto's down. Hmm. I mean, the Cecilia was an interesting option to get the CC. I, I think we actually need to stall it into range of doing... Um, what, what if we do it like this? And we try and stall for Smoky Alt. Is that a thing? Freyesto live. Oh, dude, Freyesto died. Wait, I'm, I'm going to swap those positions. Uh, so that we give... All right, let's try this. Because th then the actual Freyesto body gets knocked back and he's not in the firing line so that we only lose the clone. That's the play that I'm looking for here. We it looks like we boxed the enemies in here. Okay, we lost Smokey. Dude, I feel like... Wait, th the problem is the enemies are still out of range. The enemies are still out of range, even if we do manage to get the Smoky ult. And I can't put Smoky up there. 
I think we're bricked. Let's go one more time. C Coco, you're too slow. Why are you so slow, Coco? Just be better. Uh, let's try this one. Let's play full stall. The entire, the entirety of the stall team. Arden's dead already. Rip. We did get a Coco ult, but I don't think it's going to be enough to keep Freyesto alive. I think. Oh, we got a bit of a heal there. Nice. Yeah, but once that once that waylaid damage comes in, it's just job done. Anyway, guys, that is where we're at. Like I said, I do actually think this is a respectable way to use him. Uh, I think the battery for a Coco is actually like one of the weird techs that I think he works best in. Plus, it does give you the additional tank uh, to stall out with Thorin. So if you can, instead of like previous situations, one, if Coco doesn't get her ult off before Thorin dies, okay, Thorin dies, then hopefully your clone can die first. And then by the time Thorin comes back, you have Coco's ult up and then you still have two tanks remaining. I think it's a good defensive line buildup. The problem is in this season is all these infiltrating units that are actually absolutely just shafting me uh, from playing the game the way I want to. So <laughs> that is the issue. But once again, I think it's a reasonable team for Freyesto. Um, if you do want to go ahead and play him, once again, I don't think he is worth the copy at the moment unless someone else finds something completely broken with him. I think he's like, you know, usable if you want to. Uh, but yeah, definitely not a must have at a single copy in my opinion. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this one. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.